Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn what is frequency division multiplexing. So first of all, let us understand what is multiplexing and the importance of the multiplexing in the communication. So in a broad sense, this is the typical communication link which consists of the transmitter, receiver and the channel. So through this channel, the signal travels from the transmitter side to the receiver side. So this channel could be a wired link or the wireless link. But many times the total channel resources or the channel capacity is not fully utilized by the transmitted signal. So whenever the bandwidth of the transmitted signal is less than the total bandwidth of the channel, then the same channel can be shared with the multiple users. So in this way, by sharing the channel bandwidth with the multiple users, the channel bandwidth can be utilized more efficiently and using the same channel, multiple users can transmit the signal at the same time. So this multiplexing is a technique which allows the simultaneous transmission of the multiple signals through a single channel. So in a multiplexing, several signals are combined into a single composite signal and then they are transmitted over the shared medium. So at the receiver, these signals are demultiplexed and then they are delivered to the individual users. So with the help of the multiplexing, the link or the channel resources can be utilized more efficiently and the signals of the multiple users can be transmitted simultaneously. So now there are three different types of multiplexing techniques that is frequency division multiplexing, time division multiplexing and the wavelength division multiplexing. And in this particular video, we will learn about this frequency division multiplexing. So in this frequency division multiplexing, the message signals are modulated at the different carrier frequencies. So after the modulation, these modulated signals are combined into a single composite signal and then they are transmitted over the single channel. So in this case, as you can see, three different message signals are modulated at the different carrier frequencies. So after the multiplexing, if you see the composite signal, then here each message signal is separated in the frequency domain. Now here the carrier frequencies of each message signal should be such that there is a no overlapping region between the two message signals. And if there is a no overlapping between the two message signal, then at the receiver using the bandpass filter, each message signal can be separated. Now each bandpass filter is tuned to the one particular carrier frequency and the bandwidth of the filter should be enough to pass the message signal. But as you are aware, the actual filters have some gradual roll-off. And to accommodate this gradual roll-off of the filter, there should be additional space between the two signals. So typically, some guard band is also kept between the two signals. So now at the receiver, as I said, with the help of the bandpass filters, the individual message signals can be separated. So the output of this each bandpass filter is demodulated and this demodulated signal is then passed through the low pass filter. So as you know, after the demodulation, we will get the two spectrum. One spectrum is the baseband signal and the one spectrum is the same copy of the message signal but at the 2FC frequency. So this low pass filter only passes the baseband signal and it eliminates the frequency component at the 2FC. So in this way, the frequency division multiplex signal can be demultiplexed. And here is the complete block diagram of the frequency division multiplexing scheme. So this frequency division multiplexing technique is used in the many applications. Like they are used in the radio and the television broadcasting. So in this radio and the TV broadcasting, there is a no need to physically multiplex or demultiplex the signals. Because as far as the stations agrees to send the message signal at the different carrier frequency, then the multiplexing is already achieved in the air. So this frequency division multiplexing is also used in the telemetry as well as in the telephony systems. Moreover, the early generation cellular networks were also using the FDM technique. So these are the few applications of this frequency division multiplexing. Now in this multiplexing technique, as I said earlier, to avoid the interference and the overlapping of the two message signals, there should be enough separation between the two carrier signals. So as you are aware, in case of the conventional AM and the DSPSC, 
or the double sideband modulation the bandwidth of the modulated signal is twice the bandwidth of the message signal and here if we assume that all the message signals have the same bandwidth then in case of the am and the double sideband modulation the minimum separation which is required between the two carrier is equal to 2b that means if message signals are multiplexed and during the multiplexing if the am or the double sideband modulation is used then in that case to avoid the interference between the two message signal the minimum separation between the two carrier signal should be equal to 2b on the other hand in case of the single sideband modulation either upper or the lower sideband is transmitted so in that case the bandwidth of the modulated signal is same as the message signal bandwidth that means if all the signals are single sideband modulated then the minimum separation which is required between the two carrier frequency is equal to b but as i said earlier actually some guard band is also kept between the two signals so during the frequency division multiplexing if the message signal is single sideband modulated then more number of signals or more number of users can be accommodated in the given channel bandwidth and the analog telephone is one such example where during the multiplexing the single sideband modulation is used so typically the voice signal contains the information from 300 hertz to 3500 hertz and including some guard band each voice signal is assigned a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz in this telephony system so in the first level of multiplexing 12 such voice signals are multiplexed so this multiplex signal occupies the band from 60 kilohertz to 108 kilohertz or in other word it occupies the total bandwidth of 48 kilohertz so here the carrier frequency of each voice signal is 4 kilohertz apart from each other and this multiplex signal is called the group so in the next level of multiplexing five such groups are multiplexed and then they form the super group so this super group has a bandwidth of 240 kilohertz and it contains total 60 voice channels then in the next level 10 such super groups are multiplexed and they form the master group so this master group contains total 600 voice channels now as per the calculation the bandwidth of the super group should be equal to 2.4 megahertz but because of the guard band between the each super group the bandwidth of the master group increases to 2.52 megahertz similarly in the next level of multiplexing six such master groups are combined to form the jumbo group and this jumbo group contains total 3600 voice channels so in this way this frequency division multiplexing hierarchy is employed in the telephony system so i hope in this video you got the general overview of this frequency division multiplexing and on the second channel we will see few examples based on this frequency division multiplexing so if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos